in this week's video, I try and fail to do a focus stack of a pretty macro subject I found in the forest. So yesterday I was out hiking in the forest, actually filming for a different video, and I stumbled on what I thought was quite a nice little macro scene. I don't know what they were, but they were tiny little things, and I was quite pleased to have found them. So I set up and I started shooting and I thought I would take some extra video in order to tell you guys about it. And while I did follow most of the steps I would have needed to have done to get a decent shot, I did fail at a particularly crucial point. But I'll get to that later, let's start with actually taking the shots. So on this log, for example, that I've just been looking at, I have found these tiny, tiny little... I don't know what it is, honestly I don't, it's almost like a sort of fungus but it's got like a little cup at the end and as you can see I've had to get my tripod in a very very awkward position um, taking a lot of jiggling around to try and get roughly the composition that I want and that composition is something like this where I've got those two little cups right here in the lower thirds keeping plenty of negative space around it which I really really like I want to use a shallow depth of field um, to really emphasize them and make them stand out of their background so I'm probably going to be working around 2.8 in order to achieve that it's going to really help blur out a lot of this foreground and keep a completely blurred out background just for example if I take this at uh, f 2.8 now you can see what I mean very very minimal scene just these um, standing by themselves. I'm going to have to focus stack, but I'll get to that later. If I took this at something like, let's say, F16, let's really take that shutter speed right back down and take the same shot, you can see that we just don't stand out as much because now we've got a lot more um, different bits of grass showing, we've got a more cluttered background, um, so they really don't stand out, and that's a shame here because they're such tiny little things that I want to do everything that I can to make sure that they are the they are the prominent part of this picture. But even then, the issue is is that if we zoom in, these are such tiny things that if this the front of this uh, bit is in focus, then you can see its base isn't, and then its friend next to it is completely blurred out, as is this lovely little sort of grassy bit here and I want all three to be pin sharp so what I'm going to do is focus stack this image taking different shots on different parts of these things and then we'll blend those together in post. So just to help me later on I'm going to start just by taking a photo with my hand in the frame that way I know exactly when I look back at my shots in Lightroom where this focus stack is going to start. I'm going to zoom in take one shot right on the front of that first one Take my image, back in, focus towards the middle, zoom back in, focus right down at its, at its, at its base, take my shot. And then I'm going to do the same on the smaller cup and I'm going to do the same on that grassy bit next to it. Hopefully then we can combine those in post. They will be pin sharp, but we're going to still have that really great depth of field. So I took my shots and I've brought them over here into Lightroom and because I took a photo with my hand in front of a lens I've got this great bookend that tells me exactly where my focus stacking starts. So it's actually these seven images here. And so as you can see as we move through these images they are focusing at different points in the image therefore allowing me to blend them together in Photoshop or at least that was the plan. So I'll take you through the process first, just so you can see what I would do to do a focus stack like this. I think with these shots, I'll do a little bit of color correction first. They do look a little bit um, uh, off in their white balance. Something like this looks good. Might bring down those shadows to give it a little bit more contrast and maybe up those whites ever so slightly. But I don't want to do too much because I'll do most of these corrections afterwards. I select them all and I'll right click on this first one, develop settings, and then sync settings so that all of those photos have got exactly the same white balance and exposure and so that they should merge together quite nicely. But they are all selected so now I can just go right click, edit in, and then open as layers in Photoshop. And then we have a sip of coffee while we wait for our computer to do the work. Okay, so all our images are now in this document and they are all stacked up on top of each other. So it's a pretty straightforward process to actually do that focus stacking. We hold down shift, select all of these images in this stack and go to edit, go to first auto align layers because that is just going to shift them around a little bit just in case I nudged the camera while taking the shot. 
And as we can see, there has been a little bit of shift here. And then while we're, they are still selected, we go to Edit and Auto Blend Layers, make sure that Stack Images is clicked, and we press OK. And again, we wait. Big sip. So here then, theoretically, should be our fully focused stacked image. We should have all the focus points that we've previously taken. If we look down at the masks, we can see that Photoshop has very cleverly just selected the in focus parts and blended those in to our final image. And so we zoom in and it's not looking good. In particular, on both of the I still don't know what these are. Is it a moss? Is it a fungus? Honestly, I don't know. Please, somebody with, with better knowledge of these things, let me know what it is that we're looking at here. But clearly, the focus stack here hasn't worked. And sometimes when the focus stack doesn't work, my instinct, like always, is to blame Photoshop. Um, but in this instance, actually, I am completely the problem. Because see, what I've done is just simply not take enough images with different focus points. I was shooting wide open f2.8 and on that lens, I had a macro extension tube in order to be able to focus even closer. So that means I've got a very, very narrow plane of focus. And what I did is take a photo um, on the front of this uh, sort of main um, thing here. And then I took another one focusing down at its base. And that's fine but there's points in the middle that I should also have done. And if we look here, we've got this big stripe all the way around here that just isn't in focus. And if we go back into Lightroom and have a look at the source images, you know, this, we can see it's focused here. Yeah, there we go here. Focus right on the front and then focus there. And you can see that this middle bit on either image isn't really in focus. I haven't given Photoshop enough information to work with, um, particularly on something so small. Then we look at the back. There's the the back part of the um, of the cup, and that is still just a bit of a blur in the background. And then it's worse down on this one. It just sort of falls into nothing down here. So it hasn't really worked at all. It's it's very patchy. Um, I also don't think that my camera was particularly stable because I'm noticing that these, when I'm zooming right in, don't look particularly sharp. So overall, I don't think it's very good at all. And then we've got bits of grass that are in focus, bits that aren't. It's It's a little bit all over the place. And it is, on my part, a complete failure. And often, if I make a huge failure like this or something really doesn't work out, I just don't do the video on it because what's the point? But I actually thought that this was frankly teaching a better lesson on how to do macro focus stacking than if I had been successful in the shot. And that's why I'm still doing this video um, regardless, because I do think this illustrates where you can go wrong in doing a focus stack like this. The image I was taking, as I was explaining, was f2.8 in order to make sure that I get that very shallow depth of field look in order to minimize the scene and avoid that background clutter. But as a result, I have a very shallow plane of focus. And so I needed to take many more images. I should have been taking 15 or 20 different focus points along each of these cups. And then the same with the grass um, standing up here and then maybe some more with these foreground grasses as well. That way, when I blend them, all of our actual subject is completely pin sharp and in focus rather than having this sort of patchy nonsense that's going on here. Um, but yet still, we'd have avoided having the whole scene um, uh, in focus. So this really hasn't worked for me. And I suppose if I wanted to spend some time, I could maybe clone in some of the sharp areas here into here, but it would be a cheat and it would be just trying to cover up for the mistakes that I made when I was actually out in the field. And that isn't how I ever like to approach my photography. I want to make sure that I'm actually doing everything right when I'm taking the image, and I simply haven't done that here. And in some ways, this is a bit of a shame, and I am a little bit disappointed, but to be honest, now I've got these photos back, and I'm looking at them on my screen, I don't think it's the most exciting of shots anyway. I actually don't think my composition um, is that great. I could have done more to show off kind of the, the cup nature of them, maybe shoot from slightly higher up. Also don't like that we've got this bit kind of sticking up behind this one, although maybe I could clone that out or whatever, but I, I could have refined the scene even more before I started. So I suppose there's two lessons. Think more about my composition when I was taking it and make sure I'm taking many, many more focus points. Seven images when I'm working at this shallow a depth of field simply 
hasn't been enough. Definitely keep that in mind. It is better when you're on location to shoot many more images than you think you need just so that you've got them if you need them later. I didn't do that. I just did this seven and thought, great, I've got it. We're good. So a little bit of a disappointing end to this video in that I don't have some glorious macro image to show you and go, hey, here's how you take the shot. But I do really hope that seeing how I messed up here has been just as helpful, if not more helpful, um, in terms of uh, your own macro photography experiences. Um, so hopefully next time I'll have a better shot to show you um, and I will definitely be learning from the mistakes that I've made here. Um, if you have found this video helpful though, do please make sure to hit that like button. And if you don't subscribe to my channel, um, they're not always failure videos. Sometimes I actually take some shots I'm pleased with. So consider subscribing and hopefully finding a better shot later on. Um, but that does bring me to an end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.